What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. Today in front of me I have the Ender 7. We're gonna unbox and build this bad boy. All right, so the first thing we got inside the box is a piece of foam to throw at Jaren. Trusty user manual. 0.5 of a kilogram of PLA, white PLA. Parts box. Another piece of foam to throw at Jaren. And then it looks like we have our upper gantry. We'll set this one aside. All right, so the next piece in the box looks like one of the uprights. Another upright. Oh, look at that, another piece of foam to throw at Jaren. I love throwing things at Jaren while he's foaming. It's awesome. Looks like we have our Z access carriage. I like how Creality is taking a step towards more of Core, Core XY style printers. Some type of plastic shroud or cover. Looks like we have the bed here. Spool holder piece. Oh. More foam to throw at Jaren. Hit his camera, ooh. <laughs> and it looks like last but not least, we have our printer base. I would throw the box at Jaren, but he might get hurt. And if I break one of our expensive cameras, you guys might not see me in another video. All, all kidding aside, all the parts are out on the table. Looks like we have two uprights. I can only assume go here. Upper gantry, which is, when I, from what I'm looking at, on linear rails, on all axes. I'm, I'm impressed, actually. Um, all right, let's get to that build video. All right, so step one to installing the Z carriage, this is the first step of the printer build, is to go ahead and slide that motor. Now, carefully, you don't damage the actual motor plug on the back. They provide some M5 bolts here. What you wanna do, though, is you wanna go ahead and plug that motor in. So, I'm gonna plug that motor in so I can push it forward here and get it in. Now I'm going to line up the Z axis. I'm gonna pre-place all four bolts. Move this up out of the way. All right, now we have our Z access installed. We're gonna move on to the next step, which will be installing the uprights with the five mil screws provided. We'll go ahead and line them up. Now make sure that you have the hardware end facing the top. We don't wanna use this end. You want the one with the five bolts in it facing the upright. Now make sure you keep the lock washers on here when hand tightening. Then we'll go ahead and give those a little tighten down. And then you'll repeat this process on the opposite side. Next step in the build guys, is you're gonna wanna take the bed and secure it to these three pieces, okay? So you have one mount that is attached to an anti-backlash spring and your actual lead screw. Then you have two V rollers that if they are loose, I'm gonna show you how to tighten those up in a minute, but we're gonna wanna attach the bed to these eight holes. So we'll start with the center ones. We go ahead and take our bed, get it on the carriage, 
Get our M4 screw. Now they're the silver screws that come with the kit. This one takes a th three millimeter hex wrench. You're gonna wanna line that up. So we're gonna put it in the V-roller one first so it doesn't get snagged. Yes, sir. After you have the bed installed to the gantry, there are two more screws on either side to secure the gantry wheels together. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and install the set screws, or excuse me, the bolts into there next. Now you're gonna wanna repeat this step on the opposite side. So now you wanna go ahead and take your bed plug, install it into the provided port on the back of the printer. Go ahead and thread that on. Now we're ready to move on to assembling the gantry to the uprights. After you have your bed plug installed, go ahead and take that plastic clip they have to protect the back here and you just simply line it up. I might have it backwards, excuse me, line it up. And snap it in place. So next we're gonna take the upright gantry and install it onto the printer like so. Now be careful when placing this back piece down because you don't want to squish any of the wiring in there. Now it should just fall into place. Okay, so now that you've got everything lined up, you want to go ahead and take your screws and get them in here and hand tighten them. So go around to all of them. On all three spots, there's gonna be four bolts per spot, three uprights, four bolts per upright. So you're gonna do the two here, the two in the back, as well as the opposite side and repeat on the back and just go ahead and tighten them down. So now you wanna go ahead, release those two clips, take the provided cable, plug it in, the clip should close, make sure they're secured. Now, it does come with some cable managers here to make sure we don't damage this cable with the Z rollers. So I will go ahead and secure the cable by installing the provided cable manager clip. So give you a better shot of that. You wanna go ahead and install those. But you also wanna make sure it's definitely out of the way of those Z roller wheels. Go and there we have that. Very simple procedure. They give you a couple biting style washers. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take one of the washers and place it over the bolt. Place it into the spool holder. And then we'll go ahead with a 2.5 mil driver. Tighten it down. Place your spool holder through. Tighten it down. And there you have it. If you live here in Canada or the US, you're not in a European country that uses 240, you're gonna wanna go ahead and switch from the 230 volt, excuse me, to the 115. In China, they would have been setting everything up on 230. Here, we need to run 115. Don't forget to flip that switch. Next, we're gonna take you underneath the hood and show you what's in there, power supplies wise, et cetera. So now we're gonna have a look underneath the hood of the Ender 7 here. So what we have are stepper motor driver controllers here. Meanwhile style power supply, the standard touch screen, and one of their new boards. It's a 4.2.S1. Okay, so now we're gonna walk you through some of the screen functionality. It does look very typical of most Creality screens and the functionality behind it. So first we're gonna go ahead and take a look in settings where you have leveling, refueling. I still always recommend not using the refueling, doing it manually by hand. You have the move arrows, 
typical home button, the printer's gonna home. Now I had the bed too low already, so that's why it skips steps. So now that we've homed the printer, I'm gonna go back. I'm going to go into the temperature, manually set the nozzle and bed. We're gonna heat those up and we're gonna go through the leveling procedure once they're heated up. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into the leveling menu. We're gonna go into aux leveling. And we're gonna start at point two. Now what we're doing is we're making sure that the bed level manually is done correctly. So we'll start at point two. Now you wanna take a piece of paper and get it underneath the nozzle. Now in my case, they're not tight enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up and then I will slowly start to tighten until I get the right amount of drag under the paper. Okay, then we'll go to spot five. Same thing, we wanna get our paper under the nozzle until we get the correct amount of drag. Spot four. And then spot three under there. And until it tightens. Now I'm gonna set the Z level by moving the bed negative to get it away. Now it's too loose. I'm gonna move it back up, and this is moving your bed up to tighten it to the paper and get that perfect first layer. That one's a little too tight, one more point down. Now this will auto save your value. You can also, when you start your print, you can hit adjust and move the Z level up and down off of that first print. So just to take you through the menus, we have leveling. This is motor control. You can turn the motors on and off. Uh, the printer info is here. You can switch the language. If you don't speak English, it has Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, looks like even Turk. Um, the refueling here, you can refuel. I don't recommend refueling from the printer. I prefer to do that manually always. You can move your accesses. So very straightforward in the settings. You have a manual or automatic temperature setting. You can preheat for ABS or PLA. Me personally, I like to go ahead and pre-do it just by setting it and then back. You can also have it cool down. I'm gonna select no. You can also turn your part cooling fans on as well, which it is a dual fan system. All right, so the next step now is I'm going to take the Ender 7 here and I'm gonna run some test prints, put it through some torture testing, run some PETG carbon fiber through it, along with some PLA and some other materials. We'll be back at you soon with some of those test prints. All right, and we're back. We got the Ender 7 here. I've been printing on it for a few weeks now. Uh, some of the first prints I did was like the Skull Dice Tower. So I did that, came out really nice. Then we have another project we're doing here for the Mutant X. We needed a mount for it. So um, the tech that's actually doing that video, Jason, he'll be using this mount. As well as I printed a nice bearing spool holder. They all came out nice. It printed very well, even with PETG carbon fiber right out of the box. Due to the fact that it has this dual extruder on it, I like that it's got a filament sensor in line. It also has a fan on it for cooling the extruder, which is pretty neat and keeping the motor as well as the extruder gears clean and cool. I actually really enjoyed working with this printer. I've had it running nonstop for about two weeks now. And since we've done the test prints, I've moved on to just printing straight PETG carbon fiber and moved on to having to use a little bit of PETG for another customer, but it has been running really good. I'm actually very impressed with the quality of prints as well as the fact that it's got linear rails on it. You can't go wrong there. In conclusion, guys, I actually really like this printer. It's uh, something that's come out of Creality that I'm actually really impressed with. So with that being said, I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about us and post in the comments. Is there any videos you guys would like us to do? Um, we're always open to ideas. So 
See you guys in the next video.